Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fratworks. And this week, we're going to be taking a closer look at arguably one of the most important amps ever created. Also happens to be the amp of my dreams for so much of my youth. That is, of course, the Marshall JCM 800. So a few weeks ago, I did an interview with a good friend of mine, an amazing guitar player, Mr. Mike Squires from the podcast Couch Riffs. Check that out in the description box below if you fancy a listen. But one of the things that we talked about pretty extensively, actually, in that interview were my early influences, which got me thinking about this amp. It's been a very long time since it's seen the light today. It's been in storage for near enough 10 years. But in case you hadn't guessed from the introduction clip, growing up, I was a huge Slash fan. Undoubtedly the guy that inspired me and enthused me about guitar in a way that nobody else ever really has to be honest definitely one of the guys which i guess if it wasn't for him and appetite for destruction in particular i definitely wouldn't be sat here talking to you as a musician now really played a pivotal role in my life now being 14 15 obsessing over slash one of the things that as a guitar player i really honed in on was of course his tone as i said 2003 2004 there wasn't nearly as much information available in regard to his rig and what he used as there is now all the info about the famous sir number 39 modded marshall that he used to record appetite None of that was public knowledge yet, and all I could find out is that he was a big fan of Silver Jubilee heads. The Silver Jubilees were a series of amplifiers that Marshall released in 1987 to commemorate 25 years of being in the amp industry. They then reissued this a couple of years later in 1995, actually as a Slash signature head. Now, needless to say, being a teenager on a teenager's budget, all of these amps fell into the unobtainium category, definitely something I was never really going to be able to get my hands on. However, the one amp that I really honed in on actually maybe having a chance of being able to find one and being able to afford one was the JCM 800. Now, unfortunately, JCM 800 was actually reissued in 2002, meaning the prices had kind of spiked again and it was actually a long time before I managed to get my hands on one. For a bit of context, the JCM 800 was introduced in 1981. It was essentially an updated version of the Master Volume that Marshall had released in 1975. The Master Volume being a first of its kind for Marshall, being the first amp they'd ever released where you could not only control the input gain, but the overall level of the amp. Up until that point, in order to achieve those kind of dirty, saturated Marshall-esque tones that we know and love from so many records, kind of had to be killing people within the immediate vicinity. They weren't necessarily known for being quiet amps. As I said, 1981 rolls around and the JCM 800 is introduced and pretty much experiences overnight success. It runs for a period of 10 years. It's bizarre to think that it was a relatively short production run. It was actually superseded by the much less revered JCM 900. But during those 10 years, you couldn't really turn left nor right for seeing a stage with a JCM 800 on it somewhere. It was ubiquitous, really did rule the airways for a very long time. Obviously, Marshall realised the error of their ways and actually reissued this amp in 2002, by which point, as I said, its place was cemented in the annals of the kind of most important amps ever released. Fast forward a few years of me trying every amp under the sun to try and approximate that JCM 800 tone I had in my head. And I stumbled across one for sale in a music shop in Hereford, which was closing down. I guess their bad luck was my misfortune here. And I picked it up for in the region of £350. It's a JCM 800, 100 watt, two channel, 2x12 combo. This was a kind of later iteration they released in about 1988-1989. Now suffice to say, with my 2001 Les Paul standard, I was in tonal heaven for the longest time. And this was pretty much exclusively all I used for quite a while, actually. Save for the odd wire pedal in between, as I said, big Slash fan. Anything else, I considered witchcraft at that point, to be honest. Fast forward another few years, and it was around about the time I turned 18 that I started experimenting with Stratocasters. First thing I did was roll the gain on the amp back very slightly, looking for those cleaner Straty tones, start experimenting with a few different pedals. Now, the first two pedals I bought were a Marshall Bluesbreaker and a Boss BD2, and it's that exact rig of my homemade Strats, the Boss BD2, and the Marshall Bluesbreaker into the JCM 800 that you can hear on this clip, taken from the Troubadour Club in London when I was 19.
Now, it's worth pointing out quickly at this point that all of the tones you hear in this video, with the exception of that live clip, obviously, are taken from the Universal Audio Ox. UA have been kind enough to send me one to see what I make of it and make some videos with it. Now, it's worth mentioning that as much as there are a million different combinations of cams and mics, I've chosen to go with the 4x12 Greenbacks, as to my ear, at least this sounds closest to the G1275s, which actually come in the Marshall. So why did I stop using this amp? As I said, it was my dream amp for so many years, so it's bizarre to think it's been sat in storage for near enough the last 10. As I said, it was around about 2009 that I started dabbling with Stratocasters, and as any fan of Strats will know, they are renowned for their clean tone, even if the JCM800 isn't. Now, this is where I was struggling. I was struggling to get the kind of clean tones out of this amp that I really wanted to hear, and in that respect, it sent me on an entirely different path of experimenting with more kind of Fender style amps, I guess, that Fendery, shimmery, kind of sparkly stuff that we all know and love from so many records. Obviously, being a big Stevie Ray fan in particular, that was a tone I chased for a very long time. So, as I said, couple of that with the fact that around about that time, I also bought a Marshall Governor, a pedal Marshall released in 1988, which was actually kind of styled on the JCM 800 style circuit. Convinced myself that if I needed that Marshall dirty sound, well, I had it, obviously, in a pedal. Of course, Gary Moore used this pedal to greater effect than I probably ever will be able to, to be honest. I've still got the blues. But the next clip you're going to hear is an A-B test of the Marshall on the dirty channel and the Marshall on the clean channel being pushed by the governor. As much as it is a brilliant pedal, you probably agree with me, it doesn't really capture that tone. <laughs> Suffice to say, having convinced myself that the governor was everything I would ever need in regards to Marshall Dirty Tones, the JCM800 went into storage and as I said hasn't really seen the light of day for the last 10 years or so, but in having dug it out for this video I've been reminded of just how phenomenal amp it really is, especially with a set of humbuckers pushing it. It is, in my humble opinion anyway, the defining sound of rock, not only for the 1980s but for me at least through those mid to late 2000s, this was the only amp I ever used. It went through countless festivals, countless shows pub and club up and down the country really put it through its paces and as far as I'm aware it's still in its original state down to the original valves. I mean it's a little bit cranky but I guess that's to be expected for an amp that is 31 years old so probably won't be taking it out on tour anytime soon but in having warmed it up I can't say I'm going to let it cool down even more so with the aux now kind of making home recording that a little bit easier really is as kind of good an amp as I've ever heard when it comes to nailing those classic rock tones. All that said, having espoused the benefits of a set of humbuckers into a Marshall, would caveat all that by saying that someone else got a particularly good sound with a Strat, tuned down half a step, roll a fuzz face back very slightly into a crank Marshall, and you have arguably one of the greatest rock sounds ever recorded. I mean, it was good enough for Hendrix. As ever, I'm Chris Buck. You're watching Friday Fretworks. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe at the bell icon if you haven't already, and I shall see you next week for another video. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you soon.